Hello, hello, hello. Hello. I'm Megan. I'm Matt. And you're watching The Good Night now. Owl. Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Friday. We made it Friday. Yeah, we made it. It's been kind of a long week for the both of us. Matthew was out of town for work, and I had a shoot uh, the weekend prior and just tons of editing. Um, I had a, a vocalist and musician artist come to my my home. She's a dear friend of mine. I've done several shots or shoots with her, projects with her. So she came and actually recorded on my computer um, awesome. with some old music yeah. that I made. And it sounds really good. Uh, shout out to Adobe Audition for having really good software to be able to edit music and edit voice and record voice right onto the track as as it's playing you don't need to have too much uh knowledge on how to use the software it's not that it's so easy but it's enough that you can kind of play around with it and it's nice it's i mean especially if i can't afford to go to a, a, a recording studio oh, shout out yeah so shout out to <laughs> adobe and uh, I did that. So she came over a few days ago and it was just kind of me and the, and the cat for a few days. And just recently I did go out uh, last night with some friends. It was really good time. It was kind of those nights where I didn't really want to do anything, but I needed to leave the apartment or I would have gone crazy. Sure. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I think, you know, thank you to all you, all of my friends watching right now who support me and were like, Hey, you need to come out and ha hang with us have a good night, be a true night owl. And yeah, I'm still kind of recovering, hence the cocktail. So happy Friday happy to you guys. Friday. I'm Megan. I'm Matt. And this is the Night Owl Chicago, an all-inclusive podcast that talks about music, art, and life and, and everything, everything in between. between. Matthew's got it down oh, now. Wow. Yeah. So where were you this week? Where did you go? I was hanging out in Kentucky in an area that was hosting the NSA National Softball Association Fast Pitch Girls Softball World Hell Series. yeah, that is a mouthful right there. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was a buzzsaw for me because I, I didn't plan well, and that meant old Matt had to travel an hour and a half every day to go find a hotel because there was nothing there. It was amazing. Uh, you know, if we're not really seeing people, every hotel was booked. Of course, the place where I was at was the epicenter. It was actually where the ball diamond was, where this World Series was taking place. So, yeah, there was a lot of that just kind of driving around. Jeez. Uh, what they would kind of call that little bit of a tri-state there between Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. Yeah, it's like the uh, epicenter. Yeah, very, very pretty area. You know, mm -hmm. the Ohio River and all of that. But I'm glad to be back. That's good. Yeah. I know that you're a little under the weather. I just think it's from traveling a lot. Um, you know, and the weather's been kind of weird here. I think it rained here last, yeah, last night and get this, Matthew, when I left last night, it was about nine 30. It was raining here. And then when I went into Wicker park, no rain, not a drop. And then, Very spotty. and then after an hour, it started to rain. So I think it was kind of moving slowly, you know, more Southwest um, into the city, but we need the rain. It, we have much better days after it rains because granted, if we don't have a perfectly sunny day, the next day, it's still nice and cool. And I think our summer is a little opposite to our spring. Our spring had very, very hot days. And then we had the 4th of July, which made it even worse. Luckily you and I were in the countryside, so it was beautiful weather, but you know, Chicago is kind of a bitch. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, but yeah, I think that it's nice that we regroup for you guys. We're here. We're ready to go to share some stories for you guys. And again, thank you so much for being able to tune in with us. We just started doing the Friday Night Live for a few months now, and we both really enjoy it because we, not only do we get to see ourselves on screen, but you guys can interact with us. You can comment below as we're talking. And don't forget to send us your emails. Send us emails anonymously if you want about anything you want. We don't need specific topics, but anything that you are that you want us to talk yeah, about. Whether it's about a past yeah. episode, something that you just want, want us to talk about, yeah. or maybe uh yeah you would like to highlight us or include us in on some of this so we can let everybody else know we love sharing and and learning and yeah there's and always again, something always new to grow you the the audience out there yeah and if you're new thank you welcome uh we do have our audio version on 
Anchor, iTunes, um, Spotify. Now we're on Pandora as well. And pretty much anywhere you want to listen to podcasts. Uh, I think Spotify might be the only one where you have to kind of sign up as uh, an actual or sign up a profile. But other than that, you could just even just Google us. You can listen on Google Play. And so, yeah, we're, we're, we definitely do our audio still, but every other Saturday just to keep it easier for me to edit everything. And I'm still a little behind on a video. So sit tight, you guys, making sure that there's still more content. And guess what? Now we have 186 subscribers on YouTube. So for us, that's a, that's a win. We're still a baby platform on YouTube. We little babies. And I've been doing some very affordable promoting, which is great to get more subscribers, to get more of our videos out there and be seen, which is good because it, sometimes it's, you can't just like create content and hope for the best. Like you actually have to put the work in. So I'm learning with my YouTube, uh, uh, knowledge, but as I as I go and as I learn, it's getting a little bit easier for me. So tonight we have some topics. First of all, Wednesday is going crazy, so I'm sorry if I'm distracted. She is. I don't know what she. Oh, oh my gosh, she's running around. Oh, the she's room. running around. <laughs> Daddy just got home, so she's like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna create some craziness right now." She hasn't done this all week, by the way, so she needs to get her energy out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have cats or dogs that have. Uh, that are funny, that do things that make you laugh. But that's what this night's going to consist of. From our fans, I've actually uh, put out on our Facebook page, send me your funny and interesting cat or dog uh, stories, and I will read them out loud. I actually have some photos as well. Some of them actually gave us photos oh, to right. go with Love the. That. So I will share, I will screen share the, the photos with you guys in my notes. And I have another uh, story about Angelina Jolie. Bum, bum, bum. That's all I'm going to leave there. Right. So I don't want to spoil it. I didn't even tell Matthew. No. So he's not Surprise. in on it this time. All right. <laughs> all right, Matthew, you ready to see some Let's fan see mail? Some fan mail. All right. So I'm going to share this here so you guys can see. I know you guys want to see us, but oh, well, you're going to see some stories here. Oh, see that adorable. Look at Look that. Look at this kitty cat. Oh, okay, so I'm going to leave it up here for you guys to see. Oh, that kitty's loafing. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> All right, so these are stories from our fans that they that sent us stories about their funny cats and dogs. I just think it's great because I think there are a numerous amount of episodes where people even just sent us stories about their cats or dogs or asked Matthew and I questions about their cats and dogs, what they should do, how to be a better pet owner. I can't tell people how to how to parent their pets. I, just like I can't tell an, a human how to parent their kids. I might say it behind their backs, but I'm not going to say it to their face. But I think it's great when you can bond with another person that has a pet because then you don't feel a little you don't feel as crazy as you think you are, right? Because yeah. like Matthew and I, we cherish Wednesday. We like we almost put her above us, okay? But sometimes I feel like we're so crazy. Like we literally look at her sleeping and we're like, "Oh my god, look at her sleep." And some people are just like, "Yeah, they're sleeping. Like who cares?" You know, but we think it's so special. Like everything she does is precious to us, even when she annoys the crap out of us, right? Well, mostly yeah. me. Yeah. She doesn't really do it to you. Okay, so this one is about a cat named Ralphie. So this is Ralphie, this uh, orange tabby. Hello, oh, Ralphie. Hello, Look Ralphie. at him. Look He's at got him. a little spot oh, on his nose no, right here, no. too. It's so cute. Yes. A little freckle. Look at that. So this person says, I wanted to tell you my story of my own fur baby named Ralphie. He's an orange tabby. One time, Ralphie slipped past me onto the balcony without me knowing, and I locked him, in, I locked him outside. How many times have we locked our cats? That's yeah, once or twice. They I do that. Yeah, I heard it. Well, they could even open the door too if it's not locked. I heard a noise, a loud noise at the window and looked over to see him climbing to the screen like one of those Garfield suction cup things. Aww. How fitting because he's an orange jabby. Oh, and granted, the 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 user or the, the fan said that he's a little older now. This was an older story, maybe Aww. about a year ago or so. So he was a kitten. I think he's about over one years old now, I asked. Um, he said that uh, another and another time my cat tried to jump through the small window that is above the balcony door, not knowing that it was a glass pane. I heard a loud noise. And when I looked, 
He was just hanging onto the tiny ledge, scared as hell. He fell before I could get get to him and help and help him down though. So here's some photos. These are the older photos. Let's see. Oh my oh, god. That's when that. he's younger. Look at him. Oh, he's so cute. This is what oh. hang in there, buddy. Nope. Nope. I can't right now. Hang in there. <laughs> it's a hang in there poster, isn't yep, it? It's a hang in there poster. I always worried about wor worry about them like getting their nails stuck because sometimes they can't retract their nails and that like freaks me out because it probably hurts so bad. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is the next one. Aww. Look at this pup pup. He's a cute baby. I call all dogs pup pups. I don't care if they're old or they're actual puppies. I call them all pup pups, right? Puppers. Look at that. <laughs> this dog does not have a name. My brother first brought a, his dog, who was adopted, the first month the dog took all of my niece's stuffed animals into the backyard and buried them. Typical story, right? Of a dog burying well, stuffed animals. Them. I'm gonna save those toys. What's he saving them for? Save them. Play with them later. This is psychotic behavior, if you ask me. I'm sorry, boy. Look at those eyes. The Look dead, at those eyes. dead eyes. I'm just kidding. Oh, He's no, sweet. no. <laughs> soft, gentle eyes. Oh my God. Uh, I have a three-legged cat. I never seen three-legged cats before. No, I they have no injury. Have you? No injury, another thing. Or like yeah. they're born like that? Uh, mutations. See more stories of in in cats that are injured. I think this one has a mutation. So it says a, I have a three-legged cat that has a weird little clawed nub where his front leg should be. No. For some reason, he thinks this nub is the ultimate weapon to vanquish my dogs and will run up to them and wiggle it in their faces. <laughs> Needless to say, they are not phased and just lick him off balance until he falls over. <laughs> They're like, no cat, it's not working out. And he, <laughs> ah! uh, could you imagine a little kitty, like wiggling his little, a little nub? Stump in front of you? Yeah, like that's hilarious. Wednesday's like, I'm not for it right now. It. Wednesday, you're making fun of disabled cats. That's not nice. Oh, look at this pup pup. Look at this pup pup. Oh. Look at him. Oh, Wednesday does not want us talking about dogs. She's meowing at us right now. It says, I have a, lo a, a Lhasa Apso for a while who managed to be both astoundingly bright and hilariously stupid. <laughs> I know the type. <laughs> Wednesday managed to get up on a table and eat two pounds of grapes. Oh, no. That's like a death sentence for a dog while we weren't home. This was a 20-pound 20 do 20 dog, mind you. He spent the whole night, we spent the, the whole night with whole grapes shooting out of both ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did he not die? Our grapes like really bad. I don't know. Maybe it's the seed ones, the yeah, seeds. Maybe. I think it's the seeds that kill them. But yeah, those are our pet stories. I thought those were really funny. I'm actually gonna post, I'll make a link and post it for you guys so you can read them again uh, with the notes. But yeah, I just, I love the cat with the nub. That's just the best one, honestly. Like, could you just imagine a three-legged cat like coming up and just like wiggling his little nub and then the dogs are just like licking him over until he falls. Like he just like, he failed miserably, no, but he still no. tried. Uh, like his cats, uh, hate the, you know, usually that's that story is that cats yeah. and dogs don't get along. I think it's kind of an old wives tale because I've seen plenty of people uh, post videos of their cats and dogs getting along. So I don't think that's always an issue. And then the next one I'm going to show you guys is, oh, here's the, here's the nub. Here's the nub, the nubby. You can see it a little bit more. Okay, so this next one is about Angelina Jolie. So I'm going to show you guys, I think because I opened something else. So this says Angelina Jolie's adopted son comes into question. Investigation launched into whether he was sold for $100 for his poverty-stricken mother. Now, this is from Radar Online. I rarely ever use this as a source. I do hear about them all the time. I would say they're similar to, like, BuzzFeed or, okay. or yeah. like, uh, any other online journal. More of a journal than a newspaper or a news station. But, you know, we'll take it in stride. You don't need to believe everything that is in this article. I just thought it was interesting. I am i wouldn't say I'm a big jo Angelina Jolie fan. I do respect her life and what she's gone through. 
And I do understand her when she was like being all weird with her stepbrother, her half brother or whatever, with the kissing on camera. And then Billy Bob Thornton, that whole thing. And like her not eating for years. And you know, it's just a lot of stuff that she's been going through and still managing to save the world and go to these different countries where women were not being treated fairly and really doing a lot of film, philanthropic work. And, you know, I think that she, when she takes time out for herself, it's probably in the privacy of her own home. And I don't know why they're digging this up. I mean, Maddox is what, like 20 years old now? He's gotta be almost 20 years old. I don't know how old Shiloh is. I think I it's her son now, right? Shiloh is trans. Are, but I do see this as, I don't think, uh, she is the first celebrity to have been accused of- Madonna has. Madonna, I'm just gonna say, I say Madonna Sandra her, Bullock has. more stories. Anyone there. that adopts a, a kid that's not white, pretty much, right? I mean, they yeah, always get- Yeah, I kind of had that story of, you know, they came by the child. How did they come by the child? Yeah, but it's like, sometimes there are people, I think it was uh, that they said about Madonna that like the father didn't want the son to be adopted and like she kind of took him from her, but they go, they do go through like many different steps in order to get these kids. They don't just like go there and take them home. Like they have to actually go through process to adopt these children. And you know what? I think this is more highlighting uh, the actual parents and the country that he came from, not not really Angelina Jolie. Cause I don't think yeah. that she, I don't think she would do this if illegally, if, if she knew it was wrong. I, I really, it would kind of contradict all the philanthropic work that she's done for a while. Um, I just don't think that she's that kind of entitled celebrity in that way. She might have some entitlement towards other celebrities, but I don't think she's like that with people like that are less than, or, you know, that some people would think are less than or poor or whatever. So it says legit legitimacy of Angelina Jolie's adopted son. Um, he's 19, 19 year old son Maddox is coming into question in a brand new documentary. So this person, filmmaker Elizabeth Jacobs is making a documentary about launching an investigation into the Academy Award winners 2002 adoption in her latest project that will highlight the women behind several alleged unethical Cambodian adoptions. Lauren Galindo. So Lauren Galindo is being investigated. Uh, they're thinking that this was like a legal activity or that the children from Cambodia were being adopted illegally. Um, and this filmmaker is getting to the bottom of it, which I think she'll have to go through a lot of hoops for one, for one, because Angelina Jolie's a celebrity. So I don't even know how much Angelina Jolie is going to like, uh, fork over as far as information is concerned. It says Angelina, Angelina used Galindo nearly two decades ago to help her obtain her son from, pover, from the poverty stricken country. Questions linger over Maddox's adoption and whether his birth parents are still alive. Something that the, the actress has claimed isn't true. So she's, Angelina is saying that his parents were dead or his parents weren't around or maybe mm. they abandoned him. Um, and she hasn't really like denied she hasn't really said that they that they were like again. I'm putting my 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 bet on her that she tried to do this legally. She wanted to save him, and you know she really wanted children because when she was with Brad Pitt, that was what she said to him like I want kids, and that was what Brad wanted as well. So I, I mean they should have stopped with Shiloh, but whatever, it's okay. <laughs> Jacob, Jacobs is determined to uncover whether Angelina's teenage son was obtained by Galino's baby recruiters who reportedly uh, preyed on poor families who were desperate for money, which I don't know how much $100 gets you in Cambodia if you're that poor, but it's been so long. It's like, don't you think that money's gone by now? If it's $100? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so Jacobs is determined to uncover uh, uh, Cambodia child welfare, welfare workers have said in the past that they believe Maddox may have been sold by his birth mother for a hundred dollars. After his 2002 adoption, Kek Galibru, who is the head of the human rights agency Lakato, uh, made a strong allegation claiming that I'm not sure this child was not a real orphan and was not abandoned. So they're thinking that he was just sold, which to me, it sounds like child trafficking. 
right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of what it is. If you're going in and recruiting poor parents to fork over, we'll give you some money if you fork over your kid, yeah. Yeah, so if he was, if he was abandoned and, and or his parents died, that would consider him to be an orphan in, in that, right? And Angelina, if his parents actually sold him, then Angelina bought a child instead of actually paying money to adopt a child. In Jacob's documentary, The Stolen Children, what a title, what a title. She takes a hard look at the women behind Angelina's adoption of Maddox, as well as hundreds of others. As part of the 21-year-old's research, she's 21, so she's only two years older than Maddox, if you think about it. And she's doing this documentary. That's insane to me. Like, I'm starting out my career so late, but like this kind of documentary is going to be a lot of work. I mean, it's going to be a lot of work. She'll be traveling to Cambodia to gather information from locals in hopes of uncovering the truth about the country's countless adoption stories, including her own. I'll show you more pictures here. Let's see if we can find them. There we go. That's a good picture. Moves. And then it says in here, oh geez, let me see. Like Maddox, Jacobs seeks answers into her own adoption from Cambodia after her US parents used Galindo. So Jacobs was also so it's a personal from story, there. yeah, for her. Not so there, just there you go. Seeking out She's not on someone that wants clout. She's Jolie. She actually has yeah, an invested interest. You know what? Getting to the bottom of the story. This might be closure for her, <laughs> if you think about it. Because if you are in that situation and you're kind of questioning your identity, questioning your whole life in that way, I mean, this is kind of she's kind of doing this for herself too, which is great. Uh, it says between the late 1990s and early 2000s, half of the Cambodian adoptions, reportedly around 800, went to Galindo and her sister Lynn Devins Agency Seattle in international adoption. So it, it was also international in Seattle as well. I don't know much about like Cambodia or like their, you know, their culture or even just what's going on there. I know that there are some poor areas, but I didn't know that like, and I guess I, I guess I know that like they have, there's a lot of children that were adopted from there, like that Maurice Driver, yeah. or the, um, uh, what's her name, the girl, the YouTuber, you know, she adopted her kid from there, and you know, so I, I don't know much about this. I'd like to actually see this documentary when it comes out. It says in 2003, one year after Maddox's adoption, Galindo was charged with a conspiracy to commit visa fraud, conspiracy to launder money and the structuring of financial transactions. Her sister was hit with a $150,000 fine for falsifying documents to obtain US visas for so-called orphans. Hmm. Uh-oh, no, no. that's a lot of money. Angelina Jolie was, has remained firm on her stance that Maddox's adoption was legit. I would never rob a mother of her child. I can only imagine how dreadful that would feel, she said in the past. What do you think about Angelina? Do you think Angelina would do that? Do you think she would know about, because don't you think she would know like a research? Don't you think she would have researched how Cambodia was? I mean, maybe it's different now than it was then, but don't you yeah, think she would have know known the about their process? Why you would choose. You know, I never understood the thought process there of, Americans going across the seas, and I get it right. We're trying to breathe the great white knight, come in and let's save these, especially kids. the white saviors. If you think yeah, about it, yeah, and it's like, yeah, uh... I mean, what's her face? Um, oh, who's the girl from Grey's Anatomy? She was the one that quit. Oh, Catherine Heigl. She, yeah, she adopted a Korean child, but she did do a lot of research and she waited a while before she even considered doing that. Also, I think she was in the right place of mind emotionally, uh, and she was in a good place in her career to want to mother and want to have a child. 
And I don't know the reason why she chose Korea. I don't know. I mean, that's her prop. That's her. And that's I guess her business. It's, it's these but, celebrities go. I think to also take advantage of the fact that they have a name, they have money. It's a little bit easier to get around and get through red. But tape. don't you think they would have to still be like vetted? And stuff no, and I think in some of these cases, that's what they. And that's what I'd be curious to see in this woman's story about. You know, really, how much vetting did she do? Did she just like Angelina just turn to this woman and say, "I yeah, like I a Cambodian kid. boy." Now. I want I mean, that one. Yeah, that's what. It, uh, that's like the, that's always been my kind of like argument <laughs> with those two when they're adopting all those kids. It's like you, you picked a kid from here, from here, from here. I mean, What's you your went, daughter's you name? Went after the United Nations, and that's great. But I, I guess I just feel like when I know there are hundreds and thousands of kids here that could really use help. Nothing wrong with helping kids, but. she Yeah, so she has twins. I remember she has twins. And I think she adopted Maddox first though, and then she had Shiloh. And then she had, no, she had her son, then she had her daughter, her oldest daughter, then Shiloh, then the twins. So I think that was, so she, I don't know. Maybe, does she have another children? How many kids? One, two, three, four, five, six. She has six kids. I thought she had five kids. No, I thought it was like six or seven, honestly. What the fuck? How much, how many kids they, does they she had, have? They, they adopted like four or five kids. Okay, well, I guess I'm uh, unaware of yeah. that. I knew she had twins, like a girl and a boy. They twin. went like all United Nations with their adoption. <laughs> That's why I remember you saying when that actually when you when we talked yeah. about that before, like you were just like she has the colors of Benetton like in her house, just you know. Over here and over here, <laughs> and that's just. And I, I can see if you want. I mean, I have relatives who have that many children just by birth, and to me, it's still a lot of children. I still think five, six kids. Well, are I a think lot. adoption is. I mean, I have family members. It almost sounds are, like they're hoarding them that are this adopted, point. but it just feels like again, it's that I'm the great white hope or white knight. Yeah, I'm look here. at me. I'm look I'm the cool me, parent. I'm here to save I'm a, you. Yeah, it's not I've like got, look at me. I'm this white privileged white woman, and I've got my yeah. And I know that Angelina kids. Jolie did adopt. Did have? I think she did adopt because she didn't think she could physically have children. So when she had Shiloh, it was it was a surprise because it and oftentimes when couples and I've seen this happen when they adopt when they want children if even if in vitro does not work they adopt right and then we have we're pregnant I you know know it's mean? a very like, it's a lengthy pro it's a very to, to adopt here in the United States just even if you're going to look to adopt overseas you know it's a minimum close to a hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars just to be able to <laughs> adopt a a kid um just over overseas or in the it, is really it pretty much anywhere here? yeah no i mean when they go when you go through the adoption process you know they bet both mom and dad you have to make a certain amount of money um Hmm. And otherwise, they will not adopt you. I mean, if you're Joe Blow and Jane Blow living together, and you make less than twenty grand, and you want to go adopt a kid, that's not going to happen for you. Wow, um, it's hard. Even it's hard for single so women too. Just, it usually yeah. is. So that's why it was kind of a big deal when like Sandra Bullock went out and adopted a kid who well, was a single mom, but she's they're celebrity. I'm talking about normal. Yeah, I mean, you know. if you were just a single person out there, yeah. you didn't make. X amount of money, you were probably not going to be able to adopt, even mm -hmm. if you were very loving and had love to give and had the support to give. But you and know what? Just, but that's why there's always the other option. I mean, there's always again, you know, fostering. There's always Big Brother, Big Sister. I mean, there's just but those so many can be, ways. Those can be messed up systems too. Those you see can, how many foster parents do that? Yeah, just but for there's money? so many other ways I think to be able to kind of help out. And and to me, and I get it, it's right. It's their own personal. I think she really wanted to have children. I think she's a, probably a good mom. I just don't, I would love to know what makes up that celebrity mind that says, I'm going to go after this kid. I want to go out, I want a kid It's like having country. a Lamborghini or a car It or just something. feels like, yes, yeah, so. Yeah, like just, their property almost. Or ooeyness Even if that's it, like, not the intent, it yeah. just kind of gives off that vibe of like, I can have well, this because of my don't status. You get for a lot, remember, there was a big push for a lot of American families to go adopt uh, girls from China, right? Mm -hmm. Because, oh, uh, they had that limit. They can only have so many. And they really <laughs> Woody Allen. And, uh, but, you don't want that situation. The Woody Allen situation. Yeah, yeah that's bad. Well, again, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe <laughs> That's a just, whole different story, I know. Yeah, but... I, I guess it's just <laughs> because I'm not really too privy enough to where I know of a lot of 
celebrities yeah. and an adoption. Oh, that's, you that's know more than cool. I do sometimes about certain celebrities. I'm surprised. No, I'm what I'm you saying a is that you don't hear about it, that it's just successful and this is here. Instead, you hear oh, a lot about this. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. It's here again is a white celebrity mm -hmm. swooping in to yeah. adopt these people and great you give them a life and you've given them an advantage it's better that than that maybe, girl um they never would have experienced yeah. it's um, better than the girl from the youtuber who sent her kid back because he had autism i mean that's bad did, did did i don't think angelina jolie would do that if her kid had autism you know what i mean so there are like levels of parenting and levels of adoption and this girl was a youtuber who the country yeah, that she adopted that. her kid from had said you can't adopt this child if you're if you're going to be filming if you're using them for your your work if you're if they're going to be on film, they had strict rules and policies for that. I just know we talked about her like a few months ago. This YouTuber did adopt her, this child. He had autism. The adoption agency told him told her that they gave her all these resources to use in case she needed help, and it was too hard for her, so they she sent them back, and. The country is actually uh, the adoption agency that adopt that that she wor went through is suing her because she broke rules and policies that they said, hey, if you're adopting this child and that your job is a YouTuber, you cannot have these ch this child in any of your videos. It's against the law. It's it's constituting child abuse or child pornography or child like it's a big deal where he yeah, came we from. Made, we brought that up. That's what it felt. So like she that. sent him she was back. Just trying you know? to get clicks and yeah, likes. it's so gross. And, and to it me, it is child gross. abuse. It yes. is because you're using your child. And then like, it's so risky to even just to post photos of your kids. I mean, if they're all, oh, under the age of two, like they're kid, they're babies. But like, it's so risky to 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 post photos. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but like, it's just a fine line to have your children out there on the internet, partially because people will use them. And, they will take that image. I mean, I don't know if that's what a lot of parents. But they understand. also could use it as a catfish photo. Like, yes. oh, this is my child, and it's not really. As we've seen on catfish, where people say post photos of kids, and it's someone else's kid. It's somebody else's kid. So like, it's just so it's such a gray area, it's so complicated. It's, it's enough that teenagers are on fucking internet now, but like whatever you can't stop 12 year olds from doing it but i mean we're getting off track but like with jenna with angelina jolie I, I get what you're saying with the whole with that whole celebrity thing but there are just normal people that adopt children who are like pieces of shit you know what i mean so it's tit for tat but i do get what you mean that celebrities do have that status they have that je ne sais quoi they have that yeah they can get through the red tape but in this case, in my opinion, I feel like Angelina Jolie really does care about this, these, her children. I think we'll find out. Really, but what we'll I find think out. is if Cambodia, she went to this woman, she's like, make it happen and made it happen. Yeah, like I don't want to be wrong about it, but that's Without just my opinion. Without betting into it very much or asking a lot of questions or, yeah. oh, maybe these parents are still alive. I don't know. I don't care. I got my kid. And right? see, this is why we do this podcast because Matthew and I definitely always, sometimes we have different opinions, but I respect his opinion. You and, too. I, and I, like I said, I hope I'm right because I usually am, but I hope I'm right. I hope we'll I'm right. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But I'm excited to see it. I, I think that this girl, uh, is doing the right thing. She's not trying to expose anyone in, in that way where, you know, she's trying to get clout or or be famous or anything. She's 21. She's an experienced filmmaker. Maybe this is her first big project. And she also is going through that same situation with as Maddox. And I think she and Maddox probably had the wool pulled over their eyes. They probably didn't know. They probably grew up just with their new families thinking this is, well, you know, and, I'm and happy, but it, like now right? there's something that's going on that's wrong. We know wrong. with adopted kids, there's a really good chance eventually they are going to ask, mm -hmm. what about my biological parents? Yep. Are they still out there? Um, and you know what? As a parent, you're allowed to say yes or no, but I think they do have the right to to at least know if they can't even see or meet them, they have the right to know where they came from. I think if they, you have that what story, do you think I about think they that? have the right to you think know they that have a right? story. Yes. So even if they're, you wouldn't say that because they're children, they shouldn't know. 
I mean, I think kids should I have think that eventually right. Eventually, they should know and know that story. Yeah. Whether, and then give that option. Maybe when they're teenagers. Whether or not, if they wish to kind of track down biological mom and dad. Yeah. Because that's a whole other process in and of its, itself there. I think that's an interesting story. I, I actually just found about out about it today. And I really haven't heard much about uh, Angelina Jolie in the news. It's all been about Britney and, you know, and uh, uh, Jeff Bezos and like uh, Paris Hilton and a couple of other people that have been trending lately. So I think it's interesting to talk about Angelina Jolie and in this light also know that it's not about exposing Angelina Jolie. I don't even think she's really going to be part of this documentary as much as Cambodia is and the women behind this adoption agency. I, think the I don't think it's really going to be about Angela. Yeah, she may not I even know. be in it at all. They may not even show the family. They might just be going to Cambodia and going to the locals, talking to locals, talk, you know, tr it's going to be interesting, dude. I'm excited. Like, I'm actually kind of excited to see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm going to see, actually, I'm going to try and find out when the documentary is going to be up and then I'll either post it on our um, Facebook page or we'll just you know do a, a audio recording about it but definitely keep um, in touch with us you guys send us your stories I'm so excited to have been able to read and look at the pet photos I'm so glad that you guys some of you guys have pets it makes us feel closer to you because who doesn't love four-legged fur babies that just drive you crazy and entertain your lives with love and happiness yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to tell you guys, we want you to stay safe and enjoy the weekend. I'm Megan. I'm Matt. And you're watching The, the Night, Night Out. Out.